Rhetoric. Words cannot describe how many times I had to rewrite rhetoric, but still important and vital to know at, to at least know the basic rhetoric devices. And before you ask, yes, there is a difference between rhetorical, rhetorical devices, and liter, liter, literary devices. Basically, after a quick Google search, I found out that rhetorical devices are for speakers trying to convey emotion and persuade with high levels of articulation, while literary devices are for writers who are trying to tell a story. So basically, there are more literary devices than rhetorical devices, but some of the devices for both tend to overlap. I'll also be leaving a link to my sources in the description of this episode so then you can check them out yourselves. So basically, since rhetorical devices use as emotion, they also use the terms that we learn pretty much every year in practically every class. Logos, which appeals to logic. Pathos, which appeals to emotion. Ethos, which appeals to ethics. And a fourth one, which I had never been taught, Keros, which appeals to time. I don't get why Keros wasn't taught in class, especially business, since you'd think appealing to time would be extremely important in terms of like coming up with a product or in marketing to like potential customers. But oh well, I know now. So anyway, let's get to this week's episode, starting off with Akismus. Basically, Akismus is refusing something someone wants by coming up with some sort of excuse to shift the problem onto something else and not themselves. The example, the, the example of the site I'm looking at, which is Reedy, speaks of a hungry fox that can't reach some grapes, so instead gives up and says that they're just sour. Well, I raise you one better that most or even all of us have experience with. For this example, I'll be putting a guy in a negative spot, but just know that this could go both ways. So for instance, a guy is hitting on a girl, but the girl rejects him, to which he responds with, whatever, you're ugly anyway. That is an akismus, and yeah, girls act like that too. So if you want to trigger someone by slightly pointing out their lack of linguistic intel intellect, if you ever notice someone doing this sort of thing, say, oh, oh hey, looks like you're practicing your rhetorical skills, nice use of akismus and just watch them lose it while attempting to insult you. Next is ad nomination. Ad nomination is the repetition of the same root words within a sentence. So for example, the use of any. So let's go with you can meet anyone, anywhere, at any time. Now we have adenation or adenation. Uh. Basically, adenation is the use of a hyperbole that's been taken to an extreme length that is so clearly impossible. So, a use of hyperbole in one sense would say, working at a large busy restaurant, say, there must be about 500 people here. But an adenation would be closer, would be close, more closely to, there must be trillions of people here. Or perhaps a large family. One could say, I swear you have a new child every month. There must be a zipper attached to you. Next, alliteration. Alliteration is pretty simple. It's just a repetition of consonants. So for example, Peter Parker picked pickled peppers with the repetition of the consonant P. Then we have anacolution. An anacolution, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, is when one portion of a sentence does not fit with another portion. Though, when I was looking into it, I found two completely different examples for it. One was saying that it's basically a cut it, basically a cut off, so using a hyphen, and a majority was saying that saying it was when the second half of the sentence takes an, an unexpected turn compared to the first half. So I'm going to go with the majority and come up with an example for that. So for example, our kitchen is completely empty. We need to go to the, Never mind. I forgot the groceries in the car. I hope that's the correct example for it. 
Next, anadiplosis. This is what I like to use when writing poems, and is basically used in a lot of popular songs. It's when the end of one sentence is the start of the next. So, for example, I want to be loved, loved like a heart after it has stopped beating, beating the rest to f- the finish line. That's probably my favorite rhetorical device. Then anaphora. Anaphora is a repetition of phrases or words at the beginning of more than two sentences. So, for example, we are the army that rises up. We are the army that rushes in. We are the army that defeats any opposition, and we are the army that never backs down. With the repetition being, we are the army that. Next, antinagope, or antinagoge. Anyway, basically, from what I've found, antinagoge, or antinagogue. Is responding to one point with a counterpoint that leads to be that tends to be in a more positive perspective. So, for example, I've recently got laid. I've recently got laid off work, but at least that means I'll get some time to myself while looking for new workplaces now with more experience. Just to let you guys know, I did not actually get laid off work. That sounded like I did, but no. So I'd say it's pr- pretty important to search for the antenna goes and. It- Goges in every situation. I say almost because it's probably best not search for the positives while at a funeral. Also, another one that another example that relates to this that also relates to me. So I am on March break, but I also got a ton of hours while I'm on break. So an antenna goge for this could be like, oh, I'm working a ton while I'm while it's fine. Uh oh, I'm on break, but I'm working a ton of hours. Oh well, that just means more money. It's like that. Next, oh, anthemeria, anthemeria, anthemeria is the intentional misuse of words. So, for example, it can be something like "Do wolves wolf?" or "Have you been busy Instagramming all day today?" Basically, it's when you turn a noun into a verb. Now we have antiphrasis. An antiphrasis is the opposite meaning of what someone is actually saying. So, so for instance, I'm fine. I'm not hungry. Don't get me anything. No, I won't eat your fries. Or my pet anteater is named Bug. All in that order, of course. Next up, antonomasia. Antonomasia is for a descriptive word or phrase that is meant to replace someone's real name. So, for example, the King of Rock is Elvis Presley, or the Rock is Dwayne Johnson. Wait, Elvis Presley is the King of Dwayne Dwayne Johnson. Anyway, enough of that horrifying realization. Epiphasis. Apophasis is when a writer or speaker brings up a subject by denying it or mentioning how it shouldn't be brought up. So, for example, why would Henry say that I cheated on that test? It's not like I ever told you, the teacher, that he cheats as well. Now, aporia. Aporia is an expression of doubt which is typically insincere, where the writer or speaker is appearing ignorant or uncertain. For example. After someone had just completed a murder and are being questioned whilst holding the bloody knife behind their back, saying "What knife?" or a kid had finished drawing on the wall a permanent marker and respond with "What marker?" Aposiopesis. Aposiopesis is when one trails off at the end of sentence, which leaves others curious as to what they are going to say. So, for example. I swear to God, if you break one more glass, I'll. Next, asterismos.、Uh, no, asterismos. Asterismos is basically a phrase that begins with an explana- exclamation, and sometimes or doesn't, and sometimes does or doesn't have a follow-up. So, for example, huh? How dare you say that? Or even, you poor thing. I hope I did that right. Anyway, ascendant. 
A syntheton is when you remove conjunctions such as and, or, and but in order to make the sentence flow better. So for example, I came, I saw, I conquered. Or when we, or we need eggs, milk, cheese, butter, bread. A polysyndeton is the opposite of this, which is when you put in even more and, or, and but. Now, I cannot pronounce that. I'm just going to remove the B. Uh, Daligmia. But Daligmia. If I can even manage to pronounce that correctly, is a rhetorical insult where you repeatedly insult and uglify someone. For example, you are as nasty as a wet dog. Your hair reeks of an outhouse. You have a skid mark so large it goes up your back. You, and just in general, your rouchy stank and black death-inducing fumes radiate off you. No offense, of course. Next, cacophony. Cacophony is when a person purposely uses words that sound bad together in order to make what they're saying sound more harsh. Example, I can't counter the quarter of the country. I can't counter the quarter of the country in this core of quarter, quarrel of quarters, or even try to make up your own words like the Tiergitch. I don't know what that is. Just took the first two letters for a bunch of words that popped into my head, but nonetheless, it's just purposely making something sound displeasing. Next, chiasmus. Chiasmus is the repetition or the reversal of words across two phrases. So, for example, all for one and one for all. There is life and death and death and life. Pain is beauty, beauty is pain. Climax. Climax is when a sentence has reached its most interesting point and has begun to peak. So, for example, and hopefully I do this correctly, three things have happened to us over the week. We've been stalked, mugged, and kidnapped. And worst part of it, it was our parents. This feminism. This feminism is the opposite of euphemism, where euphemisms are meant to make something negative and possibly horrifying and turn it into something that is safer to say around a younger audience. This feminisms are meant to take something lighthearted and innocent and turn it into something negative and rated R. So for example, in my last example I brought up how some people were stalked, mugged, and kidnapped. Well, what if I told you that was actually defe- this feminism for a bunch of kids that were checked on, bought something, and were taken home away from, from say, a park? Meiosis. Meiosis is an understatement for something, unlike oxosis, which is an overstatement. For example, there's like a billion people in this world, which is an understatement because there's actually 8 billion. Or, oh, $100, I can't even get a bag of chips with that. Automatopoeia. Automatopoeia is when you w- use words for sounds. For instance, stuff like wow, boom, pop, wham, crackle, snap. Next, personification. Personification is when someone gives human characteristics, characteristics to non-human things. So for instance, the lamp awoke, the cr- clouds cried, or even As the heat rose, the smiles of the snowmen began to drop, and soon sadness took over them. Nice and peaceful. Now, pleonasm. Pleonasm emphasizes a subject while being utterly redundant phrases. So, for example, beautiful is overused and gorgeous is overused. So saying something like beautifully gorgeous is a pleonasm or perhaps something like angrily violent. Next, rhetorical comparisons. Rhetorical comparisons are three different things, metaphors, similes, and hypocastastasis. No, I'm not going to check if I pronounce that correctly, but basically hypocastastasis is when a comparison is implied. So for instance, she pointed at him, crying, demon, A simile is a comparison that is done through like or as. So, you look like a demon. Or or you're as brutal as a demon. And finally, metaphor. 
metaphor is done by claiming they're both the same. So, you're a demon. Last three. Don't worry, um, we're almost done. Rhetorical questions. Rhetorical questions are questions that, are spoke, that were spoken in order to prove a point and not to actually receive an answer. A lot of public and motivational speakers tend to make rhetorical questions throughout their speeches. So, for example, every day I wake up and get straight to work. Every day I eat healthy I, and exercise regularly. Every day I work on something to improve myself. So why doesn't anyone else? Simple. They don't have the same drive as myself. After I finished downing three pounds of sugar and 8,000 milligrams of caffeine. Honestly, I think it'd be a good, like, um, podcast or whatever, or like just comedy videos to just like impersonate like hardcore motivational speakers. But, like, it's just to the point of it being, I forgot the word for it. It's a great time for me to forget the word for it. Basically, it's just an entire joke. Whatever, I'm not going to try to remember the word for it. Anyway, yes, that's the typical motivational speaker nowadays. Next, synodote. A synodote is where a part of something represents its whole thing. So, for example, you could say something like white snow in order to show that it's winter. But you could also say something like Santa Claus in order to mean something like Christmas. That would, and that would actually be a metonymy, which is part of something that represents something far larger. Oh, two more. I miscounted. And yes, that this is written into the script. No, I will not go back and fix it. You can fight me if you want. I'll just be enjoying some nice hot chocolate and cookies while listening to the yelling in the background as I read. Anyway, tamesis. Tamesis is the separation of one word into two different parts, with the addition of a third word in the middle. So, for example, and sorry for swearing, use, f- useless. use fucking less. Itty fucking it. it. Itty fucking it. Win fucking tur. Yay, cussing! Woohoo! Alright, now we're on to the last one. Zugma. Zugma is when you place two nouns with different meanings into the same sentence. So, for example, that sword is made with metal and blood. In the sandbox, the child cried tears of rocks and horror. Or even, after finishing the house, all the workers were covered in pride and concrete. And there are some rhetorical devices that you can use when either and there are some rhetorical devices you can use either whenever either writing or analyzing different works of writing. I'ma head off to my cave of darkness and sunshine now. Check out my novels Death Trail, Flame Rip, and Arctic Blaze on Amazon Kobo, link in description. Check out the Creative Writing Club Patreon, link in description. Check out the Creative Writing Club Discord server in the description. Check out my personal Instagram at dark underscore night underscore wolves. And I am at, and I actually didn't make this episode last minute. Well, I would have recorded last minute because I'm finishing the script before heading off to work the day before the episode is supposed to be up. And I'm probably going to be working till 2 a.m. tonight, which I did. And I'm going to have to wake up early to record this episode, edit, and publish it. But anyway, see ya. Have a great rest of your day. I had to force myself out of bed at 10 a.m. just to get this done. Anyway.